Hello, my name is Anthony Willer and I'm an Applications Engineer with Go Engineer. In this video, I want to discuss the SOLIDWORKS Toolbox functionality. SOLIDWORKS Toolbox is an add-in which is available in SOLIDWORKS Professional and SOLIDWORKS Premium. It is a hardware library which consists of hundreds of different fastener types separated into different standards as an example, ANSI Inch, ANSI Metric, ISO, and so forth. Within SOLIDWORKS, you can turn on the SOLIDWORKS Toolbox add-in, either using the SOLIDWORKS add-ins tab, enabling SOLIDWORKS toolbox, or by accessing the SOLIDWORKS add-ins dialog. Within the SOLIDWORKS add-ins dialog, there's a couple of columns. On the left, we have active. And on the right, we have a link here for startup. So if you want, as an example, SOLIDWORKS toolbox library to be enabled when you fire up SOLIDWORKS, you would check it on in the startup column. Once SOLIDWORKS Toolbox add-in is enabled, I can access the SOLIDWORKS Toolbox library by expanding out the SOLIDWORKS Design library. Within the SOLIDWORKS Design library, there's a link for Toolbox. When you select Toolbox, you'll see a number of different standards show up down below. So as an example, I'm going to expand out ANSI Inch. And within the ANSI Inch library, there's a number of other subcategories for the different fastener types, bearings, bolts and screws, nuts, washers, and so forth. So if I expand out bolts and screws, there's a number of different bolts and screw options. So I'll expand out hex, or hex head. Within that library, again, there's a number of different choices. So what I'm going to do here is drop in a hex bolt. Uh, how you do this is left clicking drag, and I drag this onto my model. And what the system is doing here, it's trying to snap into place based on mate references that are already defined within the SOLIDWORKS Toolbox Fastener file itself. What the system is also doing, it's auto-sizing the fastener for you to fit into the appropriate, or, or to size the uh, fastener appropriately for the diameter of the hole. What I could do here is I can adjust the length of that fastener, either by dragging the arrow, or what I could do here on the left-hand side, under the length pull-down, I can pick an a different length using that entity. Also, if I needed to, I can adjust the size of the fastener itself from this additional pull-down list. At this point, all I have to do is hit the green check mark. And what the system is going to allow me to do here is add in additional instances of that fastener. And again, it makes use of smart or excuse me, it makes use of mate references to automatically place the fastener for you. What I want to talk about next is a shortcut we have when we're using the SOLIDWORKS Toolbox. If I access the Assembly Command Manager tab, there's a link here for Smart Fasteners, which can be used to automatically place fasteners for you using SOLIDWORKS Toolbox functionality. I'm going to select that option. It's just going to bring up a message saying that calculations may take extra time. So I'll just hit OK uh, in that dialog. And how this works. First, you have to tell the system where to place those fasteners. So in the selection entity, I can pick a number of different in or inputs. As an example, I could pick a face. And this will pick up every single hole type that's on that face. So it's picking up hole wizard holes as well as any cut extrudes that you have in the model. Or what I can do is select the holes in the uh, individually using a graphic selection or if I want I can make this selection from the flyout feature tree and make that selection in that manner. So using the hole that I selected based on uh, the graphic selection here all I have to do is hit the add option and what it's going to do it's going to automatically place some fasteners into that hole. You notice that it's using a socket head cap screw and the head is actually tied to this face. The reason why the head is tied to this face here, this is the face used for the position sketch for the whole wizard feature. If it was a cut extrude feature, it would place it to the, essentially align the, uh, the head of the fastener with the sketch plane used for that cut. 
The reason why it's using a socket head cap screw is due to how the whole wizard feature was created. The whole wizard feature was created using just a through hole. So with that, in that case, there's no fastener that's associated with it in the whole wizard definition. What I can do, if I didn't want to use a socket head cap screw, I can select the entity within the property manager on the left, right click, and I have the option there for change fastener type. From the library that appears, I can go ahead and pick a different fastener type. So as an example, I'm gonna select hex bolt, hit OK. So you'll see the system automatically updates the fastener type but also keeps the appropriate size. And if I need to, I can change the size here on the fly using the callout. So you can see the system automatically placed the fasteners using that automated functionality. And you'll see down below at the end of the feature tree, there's a folder called Smart Fastener. If I want to modify its definition, I can right click, select the option there for edit. And talking about some of the other functionality that we have, one thing to note first is the system automatically sizes the fastener for you based on the hole diameter and also updates the length automatically for you as well. What you can also do is add to what they refer to as the top stack and add to what they refer to as the bottom stack. So the top stack is tied to the head and the bottom stack is tied to the end of the fastener. So as an example, if I want to go ahead and add in an additional selection here to the top stack, for example, I'm going to go ahead and add in a washer. It's a matter of selecting the appropriate washer type. And you can see the system automatically places in the additional washers and it auto sizes the washer based off the diameter of the bolt. If I want to add to the bottom stack, hit the pull down here. And what I need to make sure is I add them in the appropriate sequence. So I'm going to start with a washer and then I'm going to apply a nut. So again, in a very similar fashion, I'm going to select the narrow uh, flat washer type and then what I also want to do is add in a nut so again hitting the pull down list here I can specify the option for as an example a hex nut and what you'll see is that the system automatically adjusts the fastener length to make sure the fastener is long enough to include the washer and additional nuts if I want to make a change to the manually dropped in fastener so what I did on the other side of the model, I could right click on the fastener within the tree, feature tree, and I have an option there for edit toolbox components. As a sidebar, if this model was opened up on a different system that did not have the SOLIDWORKS toolbox added, the option for edit toolbox components would not exist. So therefore the user would not be able to modify the definition. Select the option there for edit, what I can do here again is change the size, the length, and so forth. And what I can also do here is add in a part number as an example. So if I want a certain part number to show up in a bill of material table, go ahead and hit the option here for add, and I can key in the appropriate uh, part number as well as description if I choose to. And this hit the OK, and I can hit the green check mark to save that change. Again, this is Anthony Willer. I'm an applications engineer with Go Engineer, and thank you for watching this video.